Hello, it's uh, Sharon here. Uh, as you can see, I've just been playing Mensa Academy. Um, I just got my score of 170, which means I think I've finally figured out how all the questions work. Um, I'd imagine a lot of people who buy this game are going to be very confused if you've not taken a Mensa test before. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is just doing a quick run through on how to actually go about solving the uh, the questions that they ask you because they're very hard and there's no real instructions at all. Um, it's a time quiz, uh, 30 seconds per question roughly, um, so you have to be very quick so I'm not going to be aiming for a high score. What I am going to do is just do a few of the questions to show you how you actually solve them. It does have quite a frustrating loading time for a PC game, to be honest. They have all these cutscenes that just don't need to be in the game at all. <laughs> but yeah, as you'll see in a moment, the test itself is uh, incredibly difficult, especially if it's if it's not something you've done before. It's 30 questions, 15 minutes, 30 seconds a question, roughly. Okay, so this first one is um, it's movement of shapes. Um, the easiest way to tackle this is to pick one shape and look at how it moves and you have to imagine that these things um, kind of loop back on themselves in a spiral so this, this square here in this next picture what it's done is it's moved one square to the right and then another square to the right which brings it here and that's where it is so the square is moving two squares to the right and you'll see that in the third picture as well it's moved another two squares to the right and again here it's moved one square and two to loop back on itself. So we know for definite the answer to this question that the square is going to be there. Now there's only one option that the square is in that position so you don't have to work out the rest of it. That's the right answer. Um, it doesn't actually tell you at the end which answers you've got right so you know your score sort of if, it, if it's over like 160 you've answered the majority of them correctly. Um, this uh, kind of question is pretty simple. Um, it's just you know making numbers um, based on based on the, uh, the words so a decahedron is 10, uh, a dodecahedron is 12, so it's, it's one of these two answers. Um, a honeycomb is a hexagon shape which is 6 and a sun has 14 lines, so it's, it's this answer here. Yeah. Um, this is a good one. This is um, basically, you'll see the shape here, it, it's been flipped and it's also changed colour. And these two triangles here indicate instructions on what to do to the shape. So if you look at the next one, Again it's flipped and again it's changed colour. Now it's changed to a different colour. So the instruction that's the same in both is the yellow triangle. So the yellow triangle we know means to flip the actual image. Um, and so the other, the green triangle and the orange circle indicate changing colour. So the orange circle indicates turning the, uh, the image orange and the green triangle indicates turning the picture blue. Um, so down here we want to know what happens to the cherry. Our instruction is a green triangle which we've just deduced means turn it blue so the answer is just a blue cherry. Uh, this is just a simple sort of number puzzle uh, it usually starts with three of the same on the top so 24 divided by 3 is a uh, 3 eighths yeah isn't it um, so each of these is worth 8 okay so once you know that you can start working out the rest of the puzzle and this is the line we're interested in and look that should be fairly uh, should be fairly easy to work it out so um, we need to find out what the orange thing is worth. So if we do this line here, these two both worth 8, so that is 16. Uh, so what do we add to that to make 22? We add 6, so the blue square, uh, blue triangle is worth 6. So again on this line, we know that's 6, we know that's 8. We add them together to get 14, it means the orange thing is worth 4. 8, 4 and 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 10, 14, 15, 16. That's your answer. These ones are a bitch. These, I usually end up skipping at least one of these as I go through. The idea is to somehow work out how you use these numbers and you don't have to use them all. That's the trick and sometimes it's, it's a pattern, like sometimes the answer is to add these two together and then on this one it's to add those two together, so on the third one it's bit to add those two together. Um, so you've got to try and figure out how to make 30 out of these uh, and it looks like adding these all together, 7, 7 is 14, 8 and 8 is 16, that makes 30, so now we check if this this makes 22 the same way around, 8 and 8 is 16, 
4 and 2 is 6, 16 and 6, 22. So we can just continue doing that. 5 and 3 is 8, 7 and 4 is 11, 19 should be the answer there. They get a lot harder, by the way. Uh, this one is a pattern, uh, pattern recognition. It's very tricky, especially when you're trying to sort the start of the pattern. Um, your best bet is to, is to look through and spot the pattern. So, like for instance, here, two circles, two squares, two circles, two squares. So we can see where the pattern starts repeating. So if we look, two circles, two squares, circle, square, circle, triangle, two circles, two squares, circle, square, circle, triangle. So you know your pattern. Um, so two circles, so previously we should have had triangle, circle, square, circle, square, square, which is that one. Uh, these, it's not just a case of adding them up and trying to work out the difference. Um, the distance matters. Um, so basically what I do is anything in the first slot I times by 1, anything in the second slot I times by 2, anything in the third slot I times by 3, and then times by 4. So uh, start by working out the side you've got all the numbers for. So 2 9s is 18, plus 3 7s, which is 21, uh, 39, so let me double check that math is not my strong point, 21, plus 18, 39, and 4 thirteens. you might want a pen for these, it's a lot easier, 4 thirteens. it's 26 doubled is... 52, which gives us 80, 91, so we're trying to make 91 on the other side, we've already got 11 and 12 from the 2 times 6, and we want something divisible by 4, uh, 23, 91, take away 23 is so 1 minus 3, 68, which divided by 4 is a bloody large number, uh, yeah, this is this is why I can't just race through it. To be honest with you, it's always takes some doing. Um, four fifteens would be sixty. Four seventeens, I think, would make it sixty-eight. Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to have time to answer all these as well as talking you through it. So again, here another pattern one. Uh, very clear pattern here, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, square, circle, and repeating again. Uh, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, square, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, square. We know it's going to be one of the ones with the circle, and then it's going to be the one that carries on the pattern. Triangle, circle, triangle, circle, square. It's going to be that one. Oh, is it? These look exactly the fucking same. What am I missing? Must be colour based. Uh, I hate when they throw that in as well. Alright, there is no yellow squares in the pattern. So... Yeah, I think it's going to be this one. No triangle, red circle. Blue triangle. Yellow circle. I'm, I'm going to go with that. Uh, another one of these number grids, so you know, two each for these blue blue heart things. Um, two. Ah, oh, so the orange thing is worth two as well. It's a bit weird. <laughs> okay, so two and two is four, so that's worth nine, and two is eleven. Oh, bollocks. So that's four, that's fourteen. 9, 2, 11, 14, 25. Same again with the moving shapes. You've got your equal sign, moving 2, moving 2, moving 2, moving 2. So it's going to be up the far right. It is that one. Uh, number sequences, pretty simple. Work out what's missing by. It's usually adding numbers. So here we're adding 1, we're adding 2. Assuming we're adding 3 would make 8, adding 5 is 13, adding 7 is 21, so yeah, it's 8. Uh, another one of them, which we've seen, same again there, not too hard. Uh, this one again, we've flipped, we've changed colour, we've flipped.
flipped and changed to a different color so flipping's blue so this just means turn pink so it's the um, because these are the ones that took me a while to figure out at first I was in it completely wrong way and I only scored 142 overall um, once you know the trick um, you can score a lot higher basically um, solve the arrows first and then add all the results together so here we're mixing a red with green um, which as you can see from here will make a red beaker uh, blue with green which again is going to make a red beaker and green with red which again is going to make a red beaker red and red and red equals red um, again this one which I quite like flipping changing color flipping changing to a different color so all we're interested in is what is the circle and it's just flipping so like that Anagrams. The easiest way to solve the anagram ones is not to try and look through for, you know, spelling the word out. It's usually there's something wrong with each one, so look for that. This one's got a G in, so it's not that. This one's got a Q in, so it's not that. That one's got a C, so it has to be that one. These ones again, I uh, can't be arsed with. Pen and paper is pretty much how I solved it, just really quickly. Anything that's here times by 1, anything that's there times by 2, times by 3, times by 4. Add them all up on both sides, figure out the difference. It's on the second one, so divide the difference by 2. That'll be your answer. These again. Uh, okay. 3 sixes are 18. You can make 3 by taking those away. Time is in. Uh, 2 sevens are 14. No, that's not going to work, is it? Oh, no, not unless you add. No. These are always so confusing. As I say, I usually end up skip uh, on my score where I got 170. I skip two of these because they're that ridiculously hard. Maps is not my strong point at all. Um, two sevens. Nope. So nice No, I I can't even begin to figure this one out. So that would be I would just skip. Uh again, one, six continents. Say something that one for and two. Again with the beakers, this time you, you're not looking for the result, you're looking for one of the ingredients. Red into green makes blue. Blue and what will give us green. Uh, blue and red will give us green. So how do we make red out of green? We need a blue beaker. There you go. And again, red into green this time will give us blue. Uh, we need to make green, so that's blue and red, so we need to, to red from this result. Green and blue will make red, that's blue again. Shape patterns. Uh, circle, double, triangle, circle, triangle, double, square, circle, square, triangle, that's your repeat point. Um, so the repeat point, double, square, circle, square, triangle, double, square, circle, square, triangle. Starting from the beginning, circle, triangle, triangle. So looking for a circle, rules out the top one straight away. And uh, then we're looking for triangle, square, square. Gives us one of these and a circle again. It's, there's some sort of color element to it. Uh, there's probably a pattern in there. I'm just really lazy. Greens are quite spaced out. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's, there's a green every seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So what about yellows? Green is followed by one yellow and an orange. So it's that one. Indebtedness again. That's got an X in it. You can rule that straight out. Uh ooh. That's got a P. These look quite similar. Uh, 
That one's only got one end. There we go. Weights again, I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah, again, pretty easy. It's going to be 1, 2, 12, 3. Um, here again, adding 1. So what have we got here? Adding 4, adding 2, adding 4. Must be weird. That's very weird. Every so often you get a weird one. And I had a weird one last time. I had to make a guess. Um, one. What if we had both these together? Get five and three doesn't work. Definitely adding four. Two and four. God knows. Unless they're just meant to be primes, in which case it would be fuck. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, it would. Fuck it. It's probably five. Are they prime numbers? Am I thinking about this right? I think so. The temptation's always there to overthink it, and that's what I'll get you. I bet two or three goes, and you should be getting a pretty high score, once you know what you're doing. Uh, adding one, adding three. Adding eleven. Oh, time's up there. You see, you see what I mean about it being a very fast time limit? 30 seconds per question. I was I was two questions away, and, and then trying to talk you through at the same time. That won't be a very high score at all. <laughs> he says getting 142. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know whether this is meant to be an accurate IQ test in terms of the usual men's standard, because I usually score 144, I got 170, I got 142 on my first shot and I got 142 there just trying to walk you through it. Um, in this game they're marking 160 as the men, men's entry level, I'm pretty sure it's a lot lower on the actual test that they will give you if you try to apply to men's But yeah, hopefully, um... Hopefully that will help you help you um, understand how to solve the quizzes and how to uh, how to get yourself up there with the high score because there is an achievement for scoring over 160. Um, so yeah, hope that helped. <laughs> bye bye.